Welcome back to Braintree Today. I'm Martha Constantinides and you're watching BCAM TV. Now we'll be getting into our latest stories from the week. The state is helping residents prepare for an increase in COVID-19 cases by providing at-home tests and personal protective equipment. Governor Charlie Baker's administration plans to distribute another 3.5 million free at-home COVID-19 rapid antigen tests and PPE for municipalities and community organizations to make available to residents statewide. More specifically, Massachusetts will be providing tests, KN95 masks, surgical masks, face shields, and nitrile gloves and to municipalities and a variety of distribution organizations, including day programs, councils on aging, community-based organizations, healthcare providers, providers of affordable housing for seniors, aging services, access points, and assisted living residences. Applications are already available to municipalities and eligible organizations while supplies last. The current flu season has kicked into high gear as the Massachusetts Department of Public Health reported last Friday that cases are surging in the state. The report confirmed there were 5,462 cases during the past week. That's almost double the 2,846 cases confirmed during the week prior. Currently, pharmacies are also struggling to keep shelves stocked with medication that combats symptoms of the flu, along with the shortage of the well-known and widely used children's antibiotic am amoxicillin. Health experts agreed that the best protection against the flu is getting a flu shot and good health hygiene. Health officials are even advising patients to start wearing a mask again. State health reports conclude that only 37% of Massachusetts residents have received a flu vaccine to date. That's slightly behind the state's vaccination rate at this time during past flu seasons. Although the state is not reporting daily COVID-19 health trends anymore, the Mass DPH is still monitoring and reporting health trends on a weekly basis. On December 8th, newly released metrics show that over 102,000 molecular tests were conducted and 7,499 new positive cases were reported in the last week. As of December 6th, 239 people are hospitalized in Massachusetts and 67 are in the ICU. 76 new deaths were also reported in the last seven days. The town of Braintree also continues to monitor COVID data from the state. The town hall hasn't reported any new positive cases in the last week. The town hall website currently shows a total of 11,539 positive cases since the start of the pandemic. There have been no new fatalities reported in eight months, keeping Braintree's total deaths at 137. Thanks for watching Braintree Today. We'll be right back with more after the break. If you're 50 or older, it's important to stay up to date on COVID vaccines. Boosters greatly reduce your chance of severe illness, hospitalization, and death, and are an important defense. Even if you've already had COVID, schedule your appointment today at mass.gov slash COVID booster. Welcome back. Last Tuesday night, the Braintree Town Council unanimously approved a classification plan that maintains the town's practice of shifting the maximum amount of the property tax burden from residential to commercial property owners. Despite a lowering of the tax rate in Braintree, the average homeowner can expect to pay $187.60 more in property taxes next year because of rising real estate values. Braintree Mayor Charles Kokoris said 64.5% of the town's property taxes are paid by residential property owners. The remainder is paid by commercial and industrial property owners. He told the council that the classification plan, quote, takes some of the tax burden away from our residents, end quote. The cost of the long-awaited and much-delayed Peterson Pool project in Braintree has increased. Last Tuesday, Mayor Kokoris updated the town council on the project saying the town and the company are still in negotiations to finalize the ground lease for the property before construction can start. Kokoris said the town has determined how much ice and pool time will be needed for sports teams from Braintree High School and youth leagues that plan to use the facility. For the Peterson Pool, Edge Sports Group will pay for the bulk of the construction costs and manage the facility, while the town will contribute the land and receive reduced rental costs and scheduling preference. 
With inflation, Kokora said the cost of the complex has risen to about $30 million and that EDGE has financing in place to cover the cost of construction. The mayor told the council that he continues to talk regularly with EDGE representatives and hopes the decision can be made early next year. Braintree School Committee approved a project for a 75 by 100 foot patch of synthetic turf to be installed at Braintree's Highlands Elementary School, replacing a portion of the asphalt currently present. Vice President of the Highlands PTO, Richard Inglis, presented the idea to the board, sharing that the school would actually receive a deal on the project, courtesy of the organizations Boston Turf and Fleming Bros, who have offered to donate the labor for the project. This means the PTO will just need to raise enough money for the materials installation for the turf, for the turf is scheduled for this upcoming spring in 2023. On Tuesday, December 13th, the towns of Braintree, Randolph, and Holbrook all came together at 300 King Hill Road in Braintree for the Tri-Town Water Treatment Plant Groundbreaking Ceremony. The groundbreaking ceremony took place at the location of where the new treatment plant will be built. Many local and state officials joined the ceremony to give remarks and take part in the first dig at the site, including Braintree Mayor Charles Kokoris, Randolph Councilor William Alexopoulos, Holbrook Town Administrator Greg Hanley, Senator Walter Timothy, and many more. Here's more from the mayor. Interesting because at one point, Braintree, Holbrook, Randolph were one community called Braintree. And it took um, the three communities in their foresight to come together again to create this Tritown um, Water District. And it's interesting because this was back in 18, in the 1800s and it was chapter 217, uh, 1885 and 1886. And the final um, piece of legislation was signed on June 3rd, 1886. And through this alliance, the three communities have been able to provide fire suppression and water supply to our residents for well over 120 years. Today is a historic day for Randolph, Braintree, and Holbrook as we break ground. For more than 20 years, we have had countless meetings, endless discussions, and at times, heated negotiations. Each town has fought hard to create a new Tri-Town Water District. Through many individuals and changes in town government for both Braintree and Randolph, we never lost sight of the ultimate goal, and that was building a new water treatment plant for all three communities that will provide clean, safe, PFAS free water. We have to say collaboration is the name of the game. Over 20 years, this has taken place and we're finally here where we're actually taking a shovel full of dirt to symbolize the efforts of people who have come before us and who are with us now and we look forward to working with in the future. You can watch the full ceremony on BCAM TV's government channel, Comcast Channel 8 and Verizon Channel 26. Now, bringing you more updates around Braintree, the Trash and Recycling Center recently released an article reminding residents that doors and windows are considered construction material, not household trash, so they cannot be placed curbside or be dropped off at the recycling center. Trash and recycling carts will also need a closed lid to enable proper collection. Overfull carts may result in rejection. In addition, with Christmas and New Year's Day both landing on the weekend, Braintree officials announced that trash pickup for the weeks of December 26th and January 2nd won't be affected, with pickup remaining on normal days. Make sure to watch out for the drop-off center, though, as they will have special hours on both Christmas and New Year's Eve. If you need drop-off trash on these days, the center will be open from 7.15 a.m. to noon. Thank you for watching Braintree Today on BCAM TV. We'll be right back with more stories in the area.
Stopping smoking, vaping, or using other tobacco or nicotine products takes time and courage. Calling 1-800-QUIT-NOW is a great first step. Get connected to a trained quit coach by phone or online. They'll share ways to curb cravings, handle life's big and small stresses, and tackle relapses with you. No lectures, no judgments. Reaching out and getting support can double your chances of quitting. So, take the first step. Call 1-800-QUIT-NOW or enroll online at mass.gov slash quitting. Welcome back to Brandy Today. Now let's get right into more stories. The Division of Fisheries and Wildlife has launched a program that allows hunters to donate wild game meat, specifically venison, to residents in need in response to the elevated level of food insecurity in Massachusetts. The Hunter Share the Harvest program allows hunters to donate whole deer to be processed into ground venison distributed through the Massachusetts Military Support Foundation's Food for Veterans program. All deer donated must be legally reported and have a tag with a confirmation number and will be inspected by a mass wildlife biologist for evidence of proper field dressing and to ensure there are no signs of disease. Hunters who want to donate a whole deer that was field dressed and cooled in a timely manner can take it to Haskins Custom Butchering at 308 Silver Street in Hanover. Mass Wildlife said a donation of $25 will provide about 50 servings of meat for families in need. For more information or to donate, you can visit mass.gov slash mass wildlife hunters share the harvest. Boston residents say there's been an explosion of rats in the past year or two and city leaders want to renew the ongoing war on them. Residents have reported the rats gnawed through trash bins to access food and then made a home in cars eating through their wires. City experts said the recent demolition and construction in South Boston could be shaking things up there and the pandemic is partially to blame. With little food downtown, rats usually spread out to find food. Boston City Council President Ed Flynn proposed allocating more money towards extermination and inspections and possibly making other changes, saying, quote, We need to do a better job of looking at the times people put their trash out and work with the trash companies to make sure people put to provide as limited time on the streets as possible, end quote. City crews are also trying to manage the booming population with traps and dry ice. The Blue Hills Reservation is offering free programs to the public this month at its visitor center located at 840 Hillside Street in Milton. On Tuesday, December 20th from 10 a.m. to 11 a.m., Raccoons, Thieves in the Night will consist of a roughly one mile walk and talk with visual and tactile aids. Then on Thursday, December 22nd from 9 to 10.30 a.m., a lecture on Baker's Chocolate, which was once the largest private employer in Boston. The History in the Hills lecture is free to the public in a seated lecture with visual aids and artifacts for adults and accompanied children ages 12 and up. Also on Thursday, December 22nd from 3 to 4 p.m., the State Department of Conservation and Recreation will hold Songbird Solstice as the winter is a great time to get into birding because the bare trees make the birds easier to see and the diversity of the hardy and beautiful birds makes identifying them easier. The program will include a short walk and talk and a bird identification program for birders of all ages. For more information on these programs, you can visit mass.gov slash Blue Hills Reservation. 77-year-old John Sullivan of Quincy accused of yelling at a family of Asian Americans outside the Washington Street Post Office before hitting one of them with his car was arraigned last week. Sullivan appeared in Quincy District Court last Thursday after Sullivan was reported to have screamed at the family to, quote, go back to China, end quote before hitting a man of Asian descent with his car and driving for about 50 yards with the man on his hood. A 10 second video shown in court showed the victim punching the hood of Sullivan's car, which then moves forward, hitting the man and knocking him into a 15 foot construction ditch. The video did not include any yelling by Sullivan. Sullivan has since been released from police custody after a judge said he did not pose a significant danger to the public and is due back in court for a pretrial hearing on February 11th.
Thanks for watching Braintree today. We'll be right back with more in entertainment. Hello, I'm Bill O'Donnell, Registered Deeds for Norfolk County. The holidays are a time of joy, but for some, a time of stress. We see firsthand at the Registry of Deeds the struggles of people when it comes to mortgage foreclosures. A number of families in the county struggle to put food on the table. Realizing that one out of every nine Massachusetts households is considered food insecure, the Registry of Deeds continues to hold its annual holiday food drive to benefit struggling families here in Norfolk County. We are asking for your help in collecting non-perishable donations, such as canned meats, soups, vegetables, breakfast cereals, pasta, spaghetti sauces, along with household paper goods. To make a difference this holiday season, all you have to do is drop off a donation to the Registry of Deeds lobby, located at 649 High Street in Dedham, between the hours of 8 a.m. and 4.30 p.m., Monday through Friday. If you cannot get to the Registry of Deeds, please check our website at www.norfolkdeeds.org for a food pantry location in your community. Donations are needed throughout the year. Working together, we can truly make a difference. Thank you. Welcome back to Braintree Today. For entertainment this week, here are some newly released shows and movies to watch. First in entertainment comes the latest popular Netflix series, Wednesday, a coming-of-age supernatural comedy horror series following Wednesday Addams, the famous daughter from the Addams family. After being expelled from her school, Wednesday attends Nevermore Academy and begins attempting to master her emerging psychic ability, while trying to solve the mystery of a serial killer monster and solve the mystery that embroiled her parents 25 years ago. You can watch Wednesday on Netflix. Next in entertainment, we have Noelle, starring Anna Kendrick as Noelle, Santa Claus's daughter who must take over the family business with her brother when her father retires. Her brother Nick has inherited the role as Santa, but when Nick is having difficulties trying to complete his training in order to become the next Santa Claus, he gets cold feet and disappears. Now Noelle has to maintain the Christmas spirit and find her brother Nick in order to save Christmas. You can watch Noelle on Disney+. Plus. And finally in entertainment comes Falling for Christmas starring Lindsay Lohan as a young, newly engaged heiress who gets amnesia after a skiing accident just days before Christmas. After her diagnosis in the hospital, she finds herself in the care of a handsome cabin owner, Jake, who offers her a place at his bed and breakfast hotel until she can remember who she is or someone comes to claim her. After spending some time there, she decides to help him and his family at the lodge in hopes of getting her memory back, but struggles. She begins adjusting to a normal life all the while bonding with Jake and his family. You can watch Falling for Christmas now on Netflix. That'll do it for news today. I'm Martha Constantinides and thank you for watching Braintree Today on BCAM TV. Stay safe and we'll see you next time.